left of the box. So recently in the news, there was an incident down uh, south side of the border uh, with some shallow name calling happening between politicians. It started to rub me the wrong way, and it's not just because of what they did, but it's also the fallout that tends to happen whenever this type of comment gets said on this type of thing. And then people start to justify it, you know, like, well, it's okay to call this person fat and ugly because they called somebody else, you know, trampy or something like that. And it just, it really gets me because like, even in my comment section from time to time, I'll, I'll see people refer to somebody as like, oh, well, they're just a fat person or something of that sort. Or they'll make comments about a bad person, but mention their size in it. Because what it comes down to is the person you're trying to insult will never see that comment. They will never see it. They'll never know that some random person on some tiny little YouTube channel said something mean towards them. But to all the people who do deal with weight issues and, and the stigma around that, those are the people who will see it. It's the same as when somebody will call another person a, a queer or like they're gay or, oh, this person is just like a hidden trans or something of that sort because they're doing it as a way of insulting. And it's like, you don't use other people's identity to insult another group of people. Like, I don't care what it is because again, those people will never see it. And even some of those people who do see it probably wouldn't care less, but the other people who have baggage around it, experiences around it, they're going to see somebody that is their ally using that as slander or as a slur. And then how safe do we think we feel around those people when they do that? Like the instant they don't like something I say, am I suddenly going to get a lot of comments about being fat in the chat box, in the sandbox or something like that? You know, like it really, to me, kind of indicates what you think of people's appearance and what value you put on people when you just offhandedly use it towards other people and to be fair like to be honest i'm guilty of it you know i'm guilty of commenting on people's appearance <laughs> aspects of their appearance that they can't help because it is you want to you want the other person to hurt and so you you quite often will just go for the dagger that you know could do the most harm without realizing you know what that dagger is attached to so it's it is something that i still try to work on and i try to be uh aware of when i do something like that and i try to cut back on it because a lot of these people there's so much you can say about their behaviors their attitudes their opinions uh what kind of things and policies that they're trying to put through you don't need to comment about their appearance Definitely there's other things that can be done. So this started, this is from uh, the Humanist Report. Uh, Mike did a clip on this and then he clipped the exchange. You know we're here about uh, just a, uh, I don't think point you point know point what you're here for. Well, you the one talking about, I guess. I, I think your fake eyelashes little... are messing up. No, what you're ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. <laughs> Order, Mr. Chairman. That's beneath would even you order, 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 order of your committee. Order, I do have a point of order, and I would like uh, to move to to take down Ms. Green's words. That is absolutely okay. unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical spin. appearance Lady of Wilson's another spin. person? Are your move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby, girl. Oh, really? Don't even play, baby, girl. We're gonna, I don't. We think are going to move, and we're going to take your words down. Thank I you second that motion. So, so who will have And then it went further over Ath, here. Let's look at what happened in case you missed it. Okay. Miss Green agrees to strike her words. I believe she Perry needs to apologize. apologize. No, no, no. She Perry. Needs to apologize. Okay, hold on. Then after Mr. Perry's going to be recognized, then Miss Green. I'm not has apologizing. Well, seconds. then okay, you're reserve not striking the right to your object. words. I am Mr. not Perry. apologizing. Now let's go. Come on, guys. Why don't you debate me? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the, the, the minority. Like in the middle of all this name calling and stuff, and it's like, oh, debate me. Come on, right now, <laughs> in this totally inappropriate form. 
debate me. Like, that's not a way to get somebody to warm up to you to do a debate. Right. <laughs> like, if you want to encourage somebody to do a debate, but they know that you're just going to go for those low blows like that, then why would they? Right. Health Ch evidence. Chair you're not Yeah, you're, you're not. Out of order. You don't have enough you're intelligence. Out of order. Chair recognizes Mr. Perry. Okay, move to strike the I move to strike the ladies' words. I move to strike the ladies' words again. Well, that's two requests to strike. That's two requests to strike. Two requests to strike. Oh, they cannot take the so words. There's another motion to strike her words again. Please All right, okay, get your here's, under here's the correct the correct apology. Miss Green, do you ask unanimous do you agree to unanimous consent to strike your words? I repeat again for the second time. Yes, I'll strike right. my words, that, but I'm not right. apologizing. Without objection. Without not objection. Mr. Mr. Chair, point of order. It's me. Ms. Crockett. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A, a what now? <laughs> <laughs> Chairman. I make, a, I make a motion to strike those I, words. I don't, I don't think that's Hold a on. part I'm of it. trying to find clarification on what quality. Chairman, I, I didn't, motion to I strike no those words. I have no idea you just said. This guy is just like, almost like acting like he has two teenage daughters that he's like, <laughs> I don't want to get in the middle of this. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. A what now? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I did not want to hear that. <laughs> So that's where a lot of this kerfuffle came from. Uh, and then Jasmine uh, Crockett, so MTG wanted to talk about my appearance in committee. It's against the rules to do. Uh, she refused to apologize. The chairman ruled that it was okay. And I asked for clarification about what qualifies and engaging in personalities. And basically you wanted to know if I could talk shit about her appearance as well. Y'all know what she looks like, right? People in glass houses. Uh, this is what happens when uh, mentally deficient people who can't read and follow rules or just don't give a damn somehow end up in Congress. I'll say this, like when she went back at her on the floor, like, you know, it was eye for an eye. You yeah. know, I, I'm not that mad about that. But you didn't have to do this part. Like, to do like y'all know what she looks like i don't love that because like you already did it like mm -hmm. we already got the clip you don't have to like double down on like a looks attack on twitter mm -hmm. you could have just like left that part out you know yeah it's again it's just it's so frustrating that because this goes both ways because you have in this case you know her saying people in glass houses, referring to Margie Taylor Green, not being that attractive, conventionally pretty, as one would say. But then you also have very unattractive men that will constantly go after the appearance of women, especially like even pretty women. But suddenly it's like, oh, there's one little tiny aspect about them. And yet they'll blast all over social media and stuff how ugly this one woman is when they're nothing to look at themselves. And this is just constantly all over social media, these types of things going back and forth. And it's just the amount of value that people put on appearance. And I struggle with this a lot because I often feel like, you know, if I was conventionally pretty, if I was younger, that my YouTube channel would most likely be doing better than it is right now. It's frustrating because I know so many people that you know you wouldn't look twice at for appearance but have said some of the most intelligent things are the most comforting people caring compassionate people and yet they're constantly dismissed because they don't look a certain way when it comes to just being pretty or being attractive or handsome yeah i mean it's tough because i just feel like you know i i, I don't really engage that much when it comes to like social media mudslinging i'm so far removed and i think if i saw somebody i follow just like there's like a certain line you know when it comes to like personal attacks where like it can just be like nasty and kind of it's just like sometimes it's like too immature mm -hmm. yeah and like i don't know like i i guess like for me like i i I, I I have my own tastes or what 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 I find attractive, you know, like, and I guess it's not. 
I don't think it's the same as most people. And and yeah, and like the last thing I'm, like, I can only speak for myself. Like the last thing I'm thinking about if I'm going to listen to somebody or watch somebody is like, oh, do I find them attractive? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like that's like the last thing I'm thinking about. Like I'm watching like Tom Hartman. I'm not, I'm not like watching him because he's sexy, you know, yeah. like I'm watching or, him because he's smart, you know? Yeah. Or the, the building is burning down around you and a firefighter comes in, but you're like, oh, but you're not one of the calendar firefighter people. Like, can you go right. and bring me in like one of the hot firefighters to come rescue me? <laughs> But but unfortunately, like no matter what you're where you are on the political spectrum, you're gonna have shallow people, you're mm-hmm. gonna have immature people. Like it doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right, there's still gonna be especially when it comes to men, sadly, like you're gonna have men who are just immature and especially when it comes to how they view women, don't view them much more than just a body and a face, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah, it's unfortunate. I don't think that necessarily has to do with what uh, Jasmine Crockett and mm-hmm. Marjorie Taylor Greene had going. Like this was kind of like you made fun of me. I'm making fun of you back, and like that's what it is. But, but there is like there yeah. there is a deeper issue that you're talking about mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, and it is like as you were saying, like I can understand, especially in the heat of the moment, shooting back. But then when it basically becomes a T-shirt afterwards. Right. And then everyone is using it. Again, and, and in I, the heat of the moment, I can understand it. But for everyone just kind of like applauding it after the fact and then using it towards other people after the fact is very tasteless. You know what I want to add to it, too? I'm, you know what? Don't tell the black people I'm saying this. Like, don't tell them I'm doing this because they're going to get mad at me. I also feel like the butch body thing is a little homophobic. I'm not loving that. Mm-hmm. A little homophobic there, actually, yeah. Miss Crockett. I got to call it out. Please don't tell the Black people that I said this. But um, the butch body, little homophobic. Because, like, again, I try to break it down mentally in my head. Like, bleach blonde. Okay, the bleach blonde is a choice. Right. But bad build butch body... She does put a lot of work into, you know, keeping up a certain muscle mass and stuff of that sort. But even then, you can't control how that's going to look. You know, you can't like this this idea of like, oh, well, you can target a certain muscle zone to tone that, but not the other. So you can get the figure you want. That doesn't happen. That doesn't exist. That's not a real thing. And so it's a toss-up like do you have a body that's you know more broad and built to have the muscle you want or do you lose all that in hopes that you can have a a figure that's more uh traditionally feminine right and and i think that she's saying that about her because of marjorie taylor green's like she's big crossfit lady Mm -hmm. and you know once again like she's just clowning her back i come from that you know literally every day in high school all me and my friends did was clown each other that's Mm -hmm. all we did we never had a nice thing to say we were always making fun of each other so like for me like i'm not like sensitive to that necessarily but between them two it's kind of whatever but then when the people start running with it and like that's like the thing you're using you know, on some levels, like, okay, like, you got to be better than that. Like, you got to be, like, a little bit more mature, like, after the fact. Let her get her shit off, but then we're going to, like, leave it there, and we're going to talk about, her, like, the reasons why Marjorie Taylor Green actually sucks. It isn't because of what she looks like, actually. Yeah, because then it gets into things like this, and, and it just, it keeps on going broader and broader. So, Ken Klippenstein was retweeting this saying, don't tweet shit like this to somebody who says we have AOC and they have dog, the bounty hunter. Right. Yeah. See, like, that's just gross, dude. Mm -hmm. Like that's gross. Like transphobic. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's, it's just literally disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's this, again, it's this idea of we're better because we have hot people on our side. It's so much deeper than that, even. Mm-hmm. It's just like, why are you reducing AOC to this? Like, come yeah. on, dude. Like, you now, granted, this person, Rick or whatever, like, 
they could be 17. You know, we don't know. But if you're like an adult, <laughs> you know, please don't do that. Yeah. And I'm glad that Ken Klippenstein called it out. Yeah. You know, it does not look like this person's 17, but who knows? It's Twitter. I, this is the thing for me. Like, this is me personally. I just don't take it serious at all. It's social media. It's a place for just bullshit. This is a place where people just say heinous things all the time. If, you know, yeah, I just don't take it serious. But thank you, Ken, mm -hmm. for calling it out because it's not good. Like, it always gets to me. And I'm not going to name who this person is um, because she seems like a, a, a decent person. But every now and then there'll be posts from her just saying, what do you mean the left looks bad or something? And she's conventionally extremely pretty. Call him out. Call him out. And it's just. <laughs> Sandbox. It's just, yeah. Tell Sandy to call them out. It's um like to to put yourself out there by saying I'm better than you because I'm prettier. It always. It gets also, to me. Also, it's like who. Like I'll admit, you know, I, I wear my shirts a little revealing and stuff because I know it helps, but. And I've done some glamour shots, but it's not as me of a way of saying, look, I'm better than people or my opinions matter more or something of that sort. I just want to feel a little sexy at times. Right. Yeah. And and also when it comes to like what's conventionally attractive or not, like somebody could find somebody attractive and somebody doesn't, you know, like there's plenty of people that find Marjorie Taylor Greene attractive. And there's plenty of people that don't. That's for everybody. Like every there's always somebody that's like, I'm not really into that, you know? Like, and and really at the end of the day, if you've been out here in the world, it doesn't matter what somebody looks like if you don't like them, <laughs> you know. Like if you don't like them as a person, if you don't get along with them you're not going to care what they look like. You're going to want to go the other way, no matter what. It's just so immature, you yeah. know, like. And it's such a bad thing in society and culture and stuff. Like this is something that really, it does eat away at me. This idea of people who present female and women have a shelf life. And this idea that I'm never going to be taken seriously because my looks are only going to go downhill from here. It'd be nice to think that somebody could actually just find me attractive because I say witty Canadian things all the time. Eh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, but it's this idea of, you know, the value of what I have to say, because I've seen a lot of very pretty people who say really good things online and they're given all the praise for saying these things, which are the exact same things that somebody like me or other conventionally not attractive people say, and yet they never get recognized for saying those things and sometimes even things a lot more in depth. But if they're pretty, they can say, you know, even the most milk toast progressive things. And suddenly it's like this profound thing. Well, for sure, there's going to be like somebody, let's say somebody with a media platform, that's a man unfortunately for the most part is going to be like okay like you're cute men are going to be attracted to you let's put you on camera you know mm -hmm. so a lot of times you know the kind of conventionally attractive woman is going to get a platform because men are gross um <laughs> and that's unfortunate you know i i don't what do you do I don't know, you know, like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there's an old adage that it, it sex sells, you know, so it's just going to be that way until there are people that have a platform and have a voice that can promote people that just based on what they have to say and not like, oh, we're going to get more eyes on us because she's blonde, you know. I've had a blonde wig on from time to time. You don't want to see it. 
<laughs> with my pasty pasty pale skin and blonde hair it's not it's not a look yeah and and even like i mean i'll say like for me it's like i like i don't know what i look like to people like some people are into me and some people aren't you know like it is what it is i'm not like you know I, i've been out here and you know done my thing and things like that and have a lifestyle or whatever and for like it's just, just to me it's more about like who you pre- like mm-hmm. your personality you present yeah it, you know that's that's the most important thing really at the end of the day like i think for me part of the reason why it hit so hard is you know i used to be very very overweight and i got the surgery and so then i slimmed down um not a lot lot slimmer than what i am right now but i did end up gaining a little bit more weight back and i fluctuate but the way I was treated from when I was very overweight to when I, as some people, friends told me, you look normal now, you can stop losing weight. Those are not friends. (laughs) And just the way I was treated out in public, because like when you're overweight, the amount of people that will just randomly go up to you to give you a diet tip. Or, you know, like the type of cat calls most women got weren't the ones that I got called (laughs) when uh, people decided to drive by in cars. And just the amount of people that would go out of their way to remind me of how big I was versus, but then there's this weird mix. So you have the people who are giving you that negative attention, but to the vast majority of people, you're just plain invisible, like they don't see you. But then as soon as I lost the weight... Just my general interactions between people changed so much where I could be seen. Suddenly they were paying attention to me. They were looking at me when we were talking. Right. Things like that. And that's why, you know, I still struggle. And the weight that I have on right now really upsets me. And, you know, I want to lose the weight. But the problem is then there's nothing filling this in. I don't have the money to get the surgeries needed for the uh, the tucking and the lifting because universal health care in Canada is not universal. Definitely doesn't c- cover what they would consider to be cosmetic. Uh. And so I have to struggle with, um, it's a form of body dysmorphia. Um, right. Not the same as for trans folks, but it's definitely like this absolute despising hatred and disgust with my own body that isn't going to go away anytime soon. (laughs) And it just, it fills me with this fear of knowing it's like, well, you're only getting older now and it's only going to get worse. And it's just like, uh, but like, that's the society. That's the toxic society that we live in where it is an issue. And there's so many people that I just want to slap across the face, like Bill Maher, when it comes to his fat phobia. Because, again, it's not going to the bigger issues about that, you know, the food deserts, the food swamps, the fact that when you live with poverty, you don't have access to the nutritional food that you need. You don't have access to proper exercise, depending on the jobs that you have and all this sort of stuff. Like, it takes a lot of money and effort in order to maintain a decent figure these days for the vast majority of people. And it just constantly feels like you're being punished for things you don't have control of. Even though people will say, well, it's your weight. You do have control over it. Only not really. You have control over some aspects of it. But those smaller aspects of it don't make that much of a difference. Basically, the control I have over it right now is maintaining it. I don't really have the ability to lose the weight now because I can't afford a proper nutritional diet. And the thing is, like, it just shouldn't matter. Like, it's nobody's business. And if they would just grow up and see beyond skin deep, like, they would realize that. And, um, yeah, these days I don't have a lot of guy friends, but um, and that's on purpose. But I have had a lot of guy friends in the past who just, like... (laughs) you know, their idea of themselves and like what they're attracted to or what they feel like 
they deserve as far as a partner, <clears throat> it's the reason why I don't have a lot of guy friends. <laughs> Because, yeah, it's just like, it's so superficial and immature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, for me, I just found it silly. I'm just mm-hmm. like, dude, like, why don't you get out there and see like what you actually like in a person as uh, opposed to like what they look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I, I learned that very early. I, I my, my, my first girlfriend was gorgeous. And I didn't like, I'm like, why? Well, we don't get along. Can somebody else date her, please? <laughs> you know, like we just don't get along. I don't care mm-hmm. that like she's really pretty. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what I realized at like 19 years old. Like, okay, yeah, it actually it matters more if you get along. Mm-hmm. You know, what they look like is not going to make you love them or like them or even want to have sex with them. It's going to be their personality. Yeah. Like for me, it is very much the same. Like there are certain personality aspects that if a person doesn't have, you know, they're not smart, witty, like compassionate, like all these other sort of inner stuff. I cannot see them as an attractive person if they don't have these qualities. And then somebody who is conventionally not attractive, if they have these qualities, I'm looking at them like, you know, I need a calendar of you. And then you can put like all these hot facts about you right beside your pictures and stuff. And this is like the best thing ever. Like just, I I want a calendar of nerds. <laughs> just, you know, a calendar, like what is the smart thing they're known of for put next to them. And it's like, damn. Right. Well, but, I'll say this. I, I'll say this. I, I won't say anymore. If you're trying to date men, good luck. <laughs> but it's yeah. rough there this the world will be better without us and if women collectively say okay like you guys all gotta die i'll go first you know what but the thing is is that men some men do rock and i don't want yeah. all men i don't want to collectively punish all men because there's a large chunk of them that are horrible well, go like go like eighty twenty because yeah. it's rough out here. But but I am saying good luck though. Mm-hmm. Well, then the next layer of all this, you know, attractive makes value is Brianna Wu tweeted this out, and I've started to learn a little bit more about who she is over the last little while, and it's frustrating. What? Do you know who Brianna Wu is? I've heard that name, but I, I'm I'm reading the tweet and I just don't understand what it has so, to do with Hunter Schaefer. <laughs> um, she's executive director of Rebellion Pack, and that's tied to the Young Turks. Okay. And she is a trans woman. She's trans. Brianna is. Yeah. And okay, so gotcha. she here. She's one of those trans women that will talk to Nazis to try to say, "I'm one of the good ones. Pick me." Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And so here she is says, I'm going to be talking to Richard in a bit and trans stuff is going to come up. I'm trying to craft an argument from in a form. I think you will understand. Please send me your hottest pictures of Hunter Schaefer, who apparently is also trans. Yeah. Hunter Schaefer is the one from euphoria, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then don't let works woke servatives steal this from you. And then Richard, the person that she was going to be speaking with, who she apparently has spoken with now, says, now that's a woman. And then Brianna replying, saying, if you want more hunters, you should support access to puberty blockers. So oh, well, somebody had a somebody had a good response underneath that, actually. Yeah, remember somebody saying sarcastically, remember trans people are only people if they pass, eh, Brianna? Right. And again, this is just the value on, well, trans women are only allowed to be women and respected as women as long as they are pretty. Or or as long as they look like Jodie Foster, I guess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it, it is just this whole sickening idea of like, yes, yes, the puberty blockers, well, if we make sure the kids can get that, then we can talk the right wing into it because then that will mean that there's more 
attractive, pretty trans women to grow up into, which is just so gross. Disgusting. Like, the the reason for puberty blockers is to make sure that they undergo the puberty that best suits them. Right. And, you know, it's still going to be a luck of the draw um, as to what appearances are going to be like. That's still a lot of genetics. And it's just, it's so frustrating to be like, no, no, people should have a right to this only because it means that there's going to be some pretty people. Right. Brianna Wu, you're, you're, you got the wrong idea. Yeah. <laughs> and they're never going to accept you regardless. Like they're never, they, they might think they could eventually get to the point where they think you're cool. But, like, if the war comes, you're going to go with all the rest of them. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's the whole idea of, like, burning the bridge behind you. And it's like, you might want to wait till you're off that bridge before you burn it. Yeah. Because you're... <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> like, cause you're going down. You are going down. Yeah. And... Yeah. And and I don't even... I know I, I, I only know of Hunter Schaefer because of the show Euphoria, which I did not like. But, um... I wonder how Hunter Schaefer would feel about being used in this way too. Mm -hmm. Like, well, it's, maybe maybe would also think that's gross. Well, it's the same. Like recently, there was that other woman. Uh, oh, what was her name? Sweeney something. Who? Sydney Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney, yeah. Who apparently was hot, a cis woman who's hot and, and had large boobies. And the right was just like, oh, look, we have this. But apparently she's not even, like, political. <laughs> yeah, Wouldn't no. necessarily even say yeah. that she's on the right, but she just happens to be a, a cis woman who's pretty. But then almost immediately right away, too, was the attacks. So she was brought into this unwillingly. Unwill like, she had nothing to do with this. This was just the right, right. picking her. And almost right away I saw comments about, like, you know, stop talking about her like she has big tits because it really does a disservice to all of us women who have the real big titties. <laughs> and so well, it's she, like they yeah. have to somehow bash her appearance in whatever way. And it's just like, oh. and, but see, that, for me, and that's that, a that's woman me. thing. That's a woman thing. So it's not just men, it's women. Women will attack other women over appearance in a heartbeat like that. Well, yeah, of course. That's it's a human thing. Mm -hmm. But they like for me, it's like that's social media right there. This mm -hmm. is the dregs of society. This is like people don't necessarily curate what they're saying. They just say shit and don't care if it's hurtful or sexist or racist or sizist or whatever. That's what it's about. People were just saying, like, like, yeah, if you just go into the depths of your mind, you got some evil shit back there. But then there's some people that put that online, you know? <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, I, I, do, I do remember it was uh, Sydney Sweeney yeah. being on um, SNL. Mm -hmm. And, I, like, I don't even know how the right tried to, like, apparently her, her she has family members that are, like, MAGA or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think them them just seeing like a blonde cis woman that looked like that, they were just like, see, like real women are back or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are we talking about? Like, she's been in movies since for forever. Like, she's not new. <laughs> like, and again, it's just this idea of like, we have pretty ones, we're better because of it. And it usually is, you know, talking about women. Like, you never see right when when they do this thing over appearance you never see pictures of the men like oh look at these never. hunks we have on our side never like we're so much better because like on the left we have sam cedar <laughs> so we're better like there's none of that but it's always about the women and how the women look and how they present or people who present female and it's like the side with the most commodity, like that's the thing. It's a commodity, pretty much. Exactly. Of, it's um, just like the possessiveness of women. Like, yeah, like look at ours. Yeah, look at look at the uh, sexual stock we have over on our side. 
you know, well, it's like a, it's like an animal. It's like a yeah. show animal, mm -hmm. like a horse or a dog or something like that. Like, look at this pretty one right here. I can mm -hmm. show you that one, and then I'll show you the other one. And mm -hmm. it's like, this is literally what we're talking about: sexism. You are pr pr putting the women out there like commodities, like you mm -hmm. said, and it, it it's misogyny is pervasive, and it's just like so ingrained in people's minds that a well-meaning person who's trying to defend the looks of the women on the left, like, no, you're not going to call us ugly. Look, it's like, yeah, but that's misogyny though. Yeah. <laughs> well, but we're fighting it. Yeah. Sandy and I are fighting it. We're going to catch all of you bastards. Meow, meow.